Jesus. What do you do with Jesus, okay? What do you do with Jesus, okay? You say, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. Okay, what do you do with Jesus then? Did Jesus claim to be God? Uh, Jesus said, and, and you guys don't pick this up in English too well, Jesus said, ego a me. Ego a me means I am. I am what? Or you say, well, I am. That doesn't mean anything to you. When Jesus says, I am, how do the Jews respond? They want, to, they want to stone him. Why do they want to stone him? Because you, a mere man, claim to be what? God. Who is I am that I am? You remember Yehieh, Yehieh in the Old Testament? I am that I am. Is that Jehovah? Is that the name Jehovah, God's most sacred name? Jesus says, I am, and they try to stone him, man, because they said, you just made a claim to be God. And therefore, we're going to try to kill you, stone you for, for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. In the beginning, John, his apostle, John, his apostle, writes, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was what? And the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So he's talking about the Logos, the divine being becomes the Logos. The Word of God now becomes flesh. Jesus claimed to be the Word of God. Claim, claim to be God. So then Jesus is either a liar, this is from C.S. Lewis, Jesus is he a liar, a lunatic, or he is who he said he was, that he's the Lord. Now Jesus being a liar, what's the problem with that? When you read the works of Jesus, does it seem like he's a much of a liar? Okay. Yeah, I am the way, the truth, and the life, okay? Jesus, you know, Jesus spoke the truth, and it doesn't seem like, you know, lying, does lying clash with Jesus' moral character? Now, you should say, well, hey, if a person in this room claimed that you were God, we'd think you were what? Crazy. Jesus claimed to be crazy. By the way, did his own brothers and sisters think he was crazy? Remember in that passage in Matthew 12, they came to take him away because they thought he was crazy, okay? Was Jesus a lunatic? Are there lunatics who think that they are gods, especially when they take a certain amount of substances and stuff? Yeah, okay, and they think they're gods and stuff, okay? Jesus, was Jesus a lunatic? Uh, you guys ever read the Sermon on the Mount? You read the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the poor and um, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay, are those the statements of a lunatic? Have you ever read the Sermon on the Mount? Question, is that the work of a lunatic? Is that some of the most incredible literature ever written anywhere? Okay, Jesus' teaching is found. Jesus, I don't think you're going to get too far with this thing of Jesus being a lunatic. The teachings of Jesus have been, are incredible. Jesus is Lord. That's Lewis's conclusion. Now, Lewis skipped this one, and it bothers me, because I think today, a lot of people still don't like Jesus as God. Everybody likes Jesus as kind of a souped-up Mahatma Gandhi, okay? And so, in other words, Jesus is a good prophet. Jesus is a good prophet, kind of like uh, Martin Luther King on steroids or something. But anyways, you know, he's just, he's souped up, he's souped up. Um, yeah. So... Where everybody has problems with Jesus is his claims to be God. That's where they have the problem with Jesus. Jesus is a good prophet. Everybody loves Jesus as a good prophet. As soon as Jesus claims to be God, that's when people freak out. Now, where did this godness of Jesus come from? Some of the critics today will say that those, this thing that Jesus was God was actually legend that actually developed over a period of time and developed the legend of Jesus developed. So this legendary Jesus developed. But I, I want to ask you about his apostles, who they, they would say the apostles then designed this, this made up these legends about Jesus and stuff. But what do you know about the apostles? The apostles were really pretty courageous people. Early on, uh, Jesus' disciples said, Jesus, you go to the death. We will go to death with you, Jesus, and we will stick by your side. Yeah, Jesus, we are right there with you. We believe in you with our whole heart and stuff. And all of a sudden, Jesus gets captured in the Garden of Gethsemane. What happens to the disciples? These guys, like, uh, excuse me, like, uh, you know, somebody get killed around here. They're going to kill somebody, man. We're going to get out of here. You know, dead disciples don't work too well, Jesus, so we're going to see you later and stuff. So the disciples take off, right? Now, I ask you one question. At the cross of Jesus, the disciples are all there. Jesus, come down, do it, man. Where were the disciples? all hiding in fear and stuff like that. It's the women that are around stuck with them and stuff. But then what happens? Three days later, all of a sudden, they go to the tomb. What happens to the disciples then? Is there a transition with the disciples? 
that the disciples now, will the disciples who were fearful and ran away, question, after the resurrection, will those disciples die for Jesus Christ? Tell me what happens to, I would say, 12 disciples, but actually one of them kind of, you know, uh, did the bucket list thing, didn't make it. Anyways, so anyways, kicked the bucket. But anyway, so Judas is gone. But those 11 disciples, what happened to all of them virtually, all except one, we wonder about John, but all the other disciples, do we have records of what happened? What happened to all of them? Every one of them. Yeah, they died horrible deaths. To talk about Peter, let's not talk about it, but how they died. I mean, we're talking nasty ways that Peter died. Let's just use Peter, for example. I don't want to get into it. Well, let's not get into it. But anyways, Peter is crucified upside down and stuff like that. Okay? Did he die? Now, question. If he just made this up, and he just made up the legend of Jesus being God, would you die for something like that? And by the way, if one or two might die because they're crazy and stuff like that, would all 11 of them die and, and never say, well, I just made that up, man. I was, I was just kidding. It was, uh, don't kill me. Okay? No. They all walked to their death and were martyred. Okay? And even John, they tried to fry him in oil and stuff like that. So what I'm saying is, did they believe, did they believe this with all their heart? They believed it to the point of what? Death. Now, by the way, was this just putting a bullet in their head? No. Many of them were tortured to death. And they, that's how they went to their death. So this idea that the disciples just made up these legends. By the way, what's the other problem with that? If the disciples just made up these stories, what's the other problem? Were there people around there besides the disciples that lived around that could blow the whistle on them and say, that's not true. This didn't happen. Jesus rose from the dead, the disciples say. There were people around there that said, no, that didn't ever happen. We were there. It never happened. What's the problem with that? Does Paul say, hey, if you don't believe me about Jesus resurrecting from the dead, he said, there are 500 people still alive here. You can go ask them. They, 500 people all saw Jesus rise from the dead. Besides the 12 apostles and besides me, Paul, I saw Jesus on the road to Damascus, alive after the dead. Okay? So in other words, they can't make it up because there's other people that would have disconfirmed their stories. It's, it's bogus and stuff. And Paul's saying, go <laughs> ask the people who were eyewitnesses. So Jesus is pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ claims to be God. We would say, you know, there's, there's reason for believing that. Now, do it, does this prove it? No, it doesn't prove it, but there's reason, it's reasonable to think some of these things. Personal testimony. Um, do you know people that suggest that they have met God? Do you know people? Are there people in this room that would claim that they have met God, including the professor? And I swear I've seen the handiwork of God. It's flashed here. Praise God. I've seen stuff that I thought, I mean, have you ever prayed for something that really, really matters? Okay. My son last year at this time was over in Afghanistan. He was getting shot at every day. Every day he went out. And I didn't know this, but he was outside the wire, what they call the wire. He was outside the wire for 28 straight days, getting shot at every day. Okay? In question, did I pray for him? By the way, did some of his buddies not come back? Twig, other people, did not come back. He came back. God spared him and stuff. And uh, I praise God for that. Now, how so you say, Hildebrand, what's going on? You just prayed, and it was lucky. His draw, look at the draw that he didn't get killed and stuff like that. I should say, I could go over and over and over things that's showing you, um, uh, anyways, okay, of, of answers to prayer where God has dealt with me personally and stuff. Some, by the way, can some of the people in the room, this room probably do better than I can on that account as far as your relationship with God? Yeah, it's been, and so when I'm saying, does personal testimony count? Are there millions of people that would claim, that believe in Jesus Christ, that claim to have a relationship with God? Yeah, okay. Now, do you just dismiss that? They're all a bunch of wackos. Okay, you need to think about that, though. Are they really, you know, you say, well, yeah, we know you are, Hildebrand. So, but anyways, 